All right, welcome everyone to Life Changing Wellness, and I thank you for tuning in today. We are live every day at 12 noon Central Standard Time on Twitter, Periscope, and be sure to follow me here on Twitter at Dr. Ward Bond TV. You can also watch the replay of every daily program on youtube.com slash Dr. Bond as well. Okay, now I'm going to kick off today. Uh, well, let me do this right real quick so I do not forget. That's how this program is done. Today's broadcast is brought to you by Bright Core Nutrition, the makers of Sweet Wheat, the only organic wheatgrass juice powder. Two capsules equal the equivalent of three pounds of fruits and vegetables. And you want green nutrition? You will find it at brightcorenutrition.com. Call them today or go online, 888-227-9338. Buy two bottles, get the third bottle free, and then tell them Dr. Bond sent you because they have a lot of specials available just by watching my program here or as well as our daily television program on Direct and Dish TV. You can see the banner at the bottom of the screen to know what channel we are on. Well, I want to kick off today <clears throat> with a news item that just came in. This is extremely current. So let me bring this up real quick because I wanted to basically not really laugh, but I'm thinking, I told you so, I told you so. So let me show you what happened. A gentleman took an herbal sex supplement and his blood pressure shot through the roof. Now, if normal blood pressure is 180, is 120 over 80. His blood pressure is measured at 280 over 160. Now, doctors feel that anytime your blood pressure is over 180 over 120, that is a high blood pressure crisis. Now, the man was rushed to the emergency room. He was moving furniture, felt fluttering in his chest, and right before I started reading the article, I knew what he took was going to cause a tremendous spike in blood pressure. So I'm going to not only tell you what that nutrient is or that herbal compound is, but I want to tell you that 99% of the herbal companies using this nutrient are actually going above the limit that causes severe side effects. So here's what we're going to do. So the nutrient in question. Uh, is yohimbine. This is a compound from the African herb from a tree bark called yohimbi. It's been around for years. Many people do not know that yohimbine was actually uh, approved by the FDA. It was technically the first Viagra. Now, it wasn't called Viagra. It was just simply you'd go in for a prescription for yohimbine. The prescribed milligram of yohimbine is actually 7.4 milligram. You can actually get the effect of Yohimbine just as little as two milligram. But the problem is, is that every herbal company making a sex stimulant to improve erection and sexual, dis sexual function in men go far above the 7.4 milligram level. If you look at a lot of these supplements on the market, you will see anywhere from 25, 50, 100 milligram of Yohimbine. That means it's the extract, the standardized extract from Yohimbi bark. The problem is, is once you get above the seven and a half milligram, every man feels the side effect of high blood pressure, agitation, irritation, fluttering of the heart, cold, clammy, sweating, uh, temperature changes in the body. You can go from cold and clammy to warm and clammy just in a matter of a few minutes. It can take anywhere from four to six to eight to ten hours for the effects to wear off. So shame on you for every herbal company out there going above that limit. You need to understand that if you go online and you read about Yohimbine, Go on Amazon, for example, and read all of the reviews from every person that ever bought Yohimbi Bark. Everybody may give it a great rating for how it works because it works very well, but every single review complains about the side effect. But the thing is this, if you go above the 7.4 milligram, you're going to get those side effects. If you are dealing with blood pressure, that's a no-no. Stay away from that herb. Yes, it works. It works great. But what about an alternative to Yohimbi Bark, 
that actually works without causing blood pressure. Now, this this is not about today's show. I want to bring this current item to you. We're going to be I'm going to be answering a lot of your health questions, so we're going to be doing a Q and A uh, in today's live broadcast. So the alternative to Yohimbi bark is an herb called Mira Pawama from South America. You can find it here in America. Uh, there's capsules, there's uh, liquid extracts, there's even a powder form to use. Now what Mira Pawama does is it does the exact same thing as Yohimbi, but without the side effect of getting high blood pressure and irritation and cold and clammy feeling. Yohimbi also improves sexual desire. So it works very well. Now you can always tell when you have a, a high quality Mirapawama extract is the fact that when you take it, you should start feeling increased sexual desire in three to six hours. If you don't feel that at all, look at the label. Maybe you need to take a little bit more. They actually use it as a food compound in South America. It's very safe, does not interfere with any medications like Yohimbi does. That does interfere and have interactions with either taking it by itself or with other uh, nutrients. So check out Amir uh, Pawama. Uh, find you a high quality one. You can always tell if it's high quality just by the way it makes you feel. Everything works. Guys, everything works below the belt. If you really want to increase uh, that uh, function down below, add an herb called Butcher's Broom. Butcher's Broom improves blood flow below the belt line and works very well with uh, herbs like Mirapuama. Catuaba is out there and others. Uh, I'm trying to think of them so much out of uh, there's a, such a long list. I wanted to, I'll do a show on sec, sexual natural sexual stimulants uh, later. But I've got a complete list on that. Uh, you also need to check out my friend's book, Lisa Davis. Big shout out to Lisa Davis out there. She has a book called Clean Eating Dirty Sex, but it's about eating correctly to improve sexual function naturally. Uh, great play on words. Great book. Uh, there's a great herbal section in there. I actually helped a little bit with that. So read her book, get it online, and follow her on Twitter as well. So let's start off with some Q&A from all of you sending me questions. And I want to thank you. If you want to send me a health question, what you want to do is go is just send me an email. Questions at drwardbond.com. And I will be glad to answer your question here. Uh, so we're going to cover a, a wide variety of questions today. We're going to cover for male uh, infertility, warts, what to do for that naturally, uh, an area of heart health, angina, you know, how to improve that condition naturally. Uh, healings of injuries, got a, a, got a question from someone that was in a car accident, chipped a bone in their vertebrae. What do you do about that? Uh, a question about prostate health and also even styes on the eyes. A lot of people still have that problem. And every one of these has a natural remedy that works. So I want to bring you great information. So let's start off with the first question today. Uh, this is, Dear Dr. Bond, my wife and I are trying to have a baby. The doctor told me I have a low sperm count. What can I do to help increase it? That comes from Todd from Marion, Illinois. And well, this is, this is how it works, Todd. And, and all you men out there that want to increase sperm count naturally, make sure you're taking vitamin C every single day. That makes sure that uh, you increase uh, the motility of the sperm so that it travels very freely from the prostate and out uh, through ejaculation to help improve those swimmers to swim even better. But to increase the sperm count, you want to use a, an amino acid, one or the other. So I'm going to give you two choices. One is arginine. Arginine improves sperm count. It does have to travel through the liver to be converted uh, into nitric oxide and to provide nutrition there in the testicles to improve sperm count. The other one that I like to use is actually called L-citrulline. That goes directly into the body, bypasses the liver, goes straight to the kidneys to increase nitric oxide. And actually for the gentleman that uh, had excessively high blood pressure from using Yohimbine, he could also add citrulline to that because citrulline converting in the kidneys to nitric oxide also <clears throat> lowers blood pressure. It is arginine or citrulline is great for the kidneys, great for blood pressure, uh, great for the arteries as well. But either one helps you improve sperm count overall. Now think about the nutrition that you also need. Guys, you need zinc. Zinc is needed for fertility. 
It's needed for a healthy prostate gland. That's where all the seminal fluid is made, where your testicles produce all of the sperm, so they've got to mix there. Vitamin E is needed for fertility. Check out Carlson Labs vitamin E line. They have a wide variety of potencies for vitamin E, and it is the purest on the market. I would suggest using a a complete mix tocopherol form that has the, the alpha, the beta, the gamma tocopherols for vitamin E to get the full spectrum of what you need for perfect health in that area, in the areas of fertility. And ladies, also, uh, if you're dealing with infertility, look at taking zinc and vitamin E as well. So, guys, here's something else you may want to try. <clears throat> Sit in ice cold water like a professional athlete would do after competition or training. You ever see them sit in those, you know, I'd call them kind of like a horse trough in a way. They sit in those metal tubs full of water and ice. Well, believe it or not, your testicles have to be at least four and a half degrees cooler than your body temperature. So if we're 98.6, the testicles technically need to be 94 degrees to actually improve uh, sperm count and to improve fertility and for the production of sperm. So if your testicles are on the warm side, maybe your, your underwear is too tight. Uh, doctors will, fertility doctors will remind you of that. Uh, some of them say take an ice pack, uh, put it down below if you're watching TV to lower the temperature. That helps a lot. Uh, sitting in an ice cold uh, tub of ice water for maybe 20 minutes, uh, that could be very, very helpful as well. And then what I wanted to suggest is using an herb, well, probably one of the best fertility herbs ever created by nature, maca root. This is a Peruvian herb. You can find it here in the United States. Capsules are powder. Uh, take a teaspoon, of day, a teaspoon a day every morning. This will increase energy levels, but it increases fertility because it also contains uh, the, the amino acid arginine, works on your adrenal glands, uh, they have seen, I mean, the research on it is fantastic. And it kind of steps back in history with maca root because it grows in the Andes Mountains of Peru. So when the settlers brought their animals up to the, the mountaintop, so to speak, they found out that they weren't reproducing like they were when they were down in the valley. And so they started feeding them maca. And maca is a vegetable, kind of part of the turnip family. And they started feeding it, feeding the animals maca, and the animals started reproducing again. Well, the same properties found in maca for animals works for us men and also increases fertility in women. It's also a hormonal regulator. If you've watched my show from yesterday talking about menopause, I also mentioned maca as well. So it balances your hormones, contains no hormones in the plant whatsoever, but contains plant alkaloids that will help to improve those with infertility problems, men or women. So that is what you could do for fertility. And here's the deal, guys. Eat healthy. Stay away from bad fats, okay? Eat fruits, vegetables, lean protein. Uh, take omega-3s. Do everything that you can to improve the health of your body. Exercise. That can also help with the areas of testosterone levels. And, you know, if you have a fertility problem, make sure that your testosterone levels are in a normal range and depending on age that can go anywhere from 500 to 700 in a range upwards to 900 to 1100 anytime testosterone levels are below 420 then you're in the range to have testosterone replacement therapy so talk to your doctor if you have a problem with low testosterone we'll get into some testosterone nutrients later on uh, on this broadcast not today's broadcast but in other future broadcasts. So let's go with the next question. Uh, this one I kind of get kind of often, which is kind of strange, but this comes from Teresa from Jonesboro, Arkansas. Hello for everybody in Arkansas. And she asks, is there a surefire remedy for warts? Well, let's explain what warts are. So warts are small, self-limited, benign tumors caused by, get this, one of over a hundred types of HPV, okay? They believe that just about every person in this country has HPV of some sort. So warts come from HPV. You know, even when you're a child, you may get a, a wart on your hand or something. So how do you get rid of those? Well, first of all, there's a clinical appearance of warts that are common warts, flat warts, plantar warts, uh, filiform warts, genital warts. They, sometimes warts will disappear spontaneously 
or for some it could take many years. So let me give you some remedies for warts that really, really work. And I'm not talking about just freezing them off from the doctor or rubbing garlic on them, which for some people they do that because garlic is a real strong antiviral, antibacterial. But what I suggest to use something extremely natural, very powerful, very effective, and you can see a difference in one to two weeks by taking this nutrient every single day called monolaurin. Monolaurin is a compound from coconut oil and it contains what they call monoglycerides. And this is found, believe it or not, in human breast milk. They believe that coconut milk, the properties of coconut milk are really close to human breast milk. But when it comes to taking monolaurin, you want the compound, you want the extract, not just chugging a bunch of coconut milk and hoping, hoping your uh, wart goes away, but you never know, it may actually work if you do that. But I do know for a fact that monolaurin, I've seen it firsthand in people who take monolaurin for warts, and it absolutely works. Not only when you start taking it, and usually the dose for what I would suggest, at least 1,800 milligrams a day. You will see it on over the counter at about 600 milligrams per capsule. If you take about 1,800 milligrams a day uh, or twice a day, you will actually notice the wart either fading away or literally falling off. I've had people tell me that they started taking monolaurin and the warts fell off and they completely forgot about it. So if they looked at their hand or wherever the wart was, they were like, where did it go? Well, that's how strong monolaurin is. It also shows that your immune system is low. I suggest taking vitamin A. Vitamin A has been a very old remedy for warts because vitamin A, as well as the mineral zinc, they kind of piggyback each other. They, have, they rely on one another to function and improve the health of our immune system. So you want to take, when you take vitamin A, you want to take zinc. And I suggest doing uh, zinc picolinate because zinc picolinate doesn't cause nausea. Uh, if you look on the market, look at the bottles, and if it says chelated zinc, that means the mineral zinc has been bound to an amino acid called histidine. And histidine, believe it or not, well, converts to histamine. Uh, you know, you know. So let's say the uh, best way to uh, to uh, explain that one is like an orgasm. If you have an orgasm, then you're releasing histamine. And for those who lack orgasm, can actually take the amino acid histidine by itself and actually improve that. Some sometimes just over a matter of days. So if you live on anti histamines daily, lack of orgasm can be a problem. And at the same time, uh, you could be causing an imbalance of your immune system, so be aware of that. But monolarin for warts, monolarin also enhances the function of your immune system. So if you have weak immunity, it, it helps to boost that in a natural way. If you're dealing with, um, let me see here, if you're, if you're dealing with bacteria or viruses or fungus, monolarin breaks down the protective coating around those bad pathogens and basically wipes it away so your immune system can come in and wipe out the fungus, the viruses, and the bacteria. So you can use monolarm for anything that ails you. It works very well. You can take a low dose every single day uh, if you have a weak immune system. Kids can take a capsule a day before they go to school so they don't catch all the bugs from all the other kids or all the, the junk that comes out of the air vents at the school. So think about that one. All right, next question. Here we go. Oh, I was talking about the vitamin A and zinc, so let me step back. Sometimes my brain works faster than my mouth sometimes. But uh, So you want to take zinc and vitamin A if you're dealing with warts or low immunity. I suggest zinc picolinate because it works great on the stomach. Uh, chelated zinc, they're great, but if you have a chelated zinc at home, 50 to 75 milligram, but always take it with food so it doesn't cause an upset stomach. If you have a zinc picolinate, that dose could be anywhere from 35 to 70 milligrams uh, every single day. All right, next question. This comes from David from Cleveland, Ohio, and he's asked, I've been experiencing angina pain lately, and all the doctor wants to do is medicate me. What is angina, and what can I do naturally for it? Well, angina is simply just a heart cramp caused by a lack of oxygen. That's really all it is, but... I'm not going to tell you not to take medication because medication can save your life. Always go to a doctor if there's something wrong with you to get at least try to get a proper diagnosis, especially when it comes to cardiovascular health. You know, seek a cardiologist or go to your general practitioner first to find out what the problem is. 
Now with angina, there are nutrients you can do to improve your heart health as well as improve low oxygen levels in the body. First of all, one of the biggest problems we have in America is we don't breathe. We don't breathe deeply. Have you ever sat in front of your computer or you're watching TV? Have you ever been mindful of your breathing patterns? I guarantee you most of us breathe very shallow. It's almost like, how are we even breathing at all? Because we're not taking those deep breaths. So what you need to do is just go. Get that, get that air, that oxygen into your lungs. Hold it for about four or five seconds and breathe out another eight. Do that three or four times. Breathing exercises also improves our overall health, calms us down, helps our immune system, and so much more. People that go through cancer, when they practice breathing exercises, it actually helps them because cancer can't survive in an oxygen-rich environment. That's why we need to be breathing deeper and do breathing exercises every single day. So with angina, you have low oxygen levels leading to a heart cramp. What can you do? There's a nutrient called DMG, dimethylglycine. This is a natural nutrient, tons of studies on it. It actually prevents low oxygen levels in our bloodstream as well as our brain. There's a protective effect. It can also increase our energy levels naturally. Uh, there's a lot of uh, research on DMG in the areas of autism uh, because it helps to improve social skills, so to speak, uh, learning ability and focus. But it also helps to prevent low oxygen levels in the heart and the brain. I also suggest using things like CoQ10 that's needed for the heart, uh, carnitine that's an amino acid that also works for the heart muscle. But by using CoQ10 and carnitine, we kind of consider those as surface nutrients. So how do you get deep into the tissue? Well, you want to use a nutrient called ribose. We are actually born with ribose. It's a five carbon sugar that we are born with. If we didn't have ribose in our body, we would basically have rigor mortis with our eyes open, and we surely don't want that. So ribose is needed for contraction of the muscle and relaxation of the muscle. Now, when it comes to our heart, that is the muscle that is functioning every second of the day from the day we are the day that we are conceived our heart is formed uh, we're inside our mother's womb and our heart is beating all the way till we were born to the day that well until the day that we die that's that's a part of our lifespan that in which the heart never stops beating so how do we keep that healthy well by using ribose ribose improves the contraction of the heart muscle and the relax, relaxation phase of the heart. So you want to bring blood in and you want to contract and push that blood out to the rest of the body. Ribose is fantastic for angina. There's tons of clinical studies on ribose and cardiovascular health. Believe it or not, ribose powder is actually found in cardi cardiology hospitals because they will usually, usually you may want to ask this, they will usually use ribose three days prior to open heart surgery. There's a lot of studies on ribose that shows that they have done open heart surgery without putting the patient on a heart and lung machine. Ribose improves and decreases the mortality rate. By someone taking ribose every single day, you're going to reduce your risk for a heart attack by 25%. If you were to have a heart attack, you can reduce heart damage by 25% by taking ribose every single day. I use I always take 5 grams in the morning, 5 grams in the evening because it also helps with relaxation uh, at night. So it pumps your energy up in the, uh, in the morning and helps you relax at night. Go figure. It's an amazing nutrient. Again, it's found in the human body, and we can replenish that. But it's perfect for heart health. If you're dealing with congestive heart failure, ribose is so safe that it will not interfere with any type of cardiovascular medication. Again, it's a nutrient that we need. I know of three people who were sitting on a heart transplant list, started taking five grams of ribose three times a day. They got to the point to where when the doctor rechecked their hearts over time, that their hearts were stronger, that then now they were no longer eligible to have a new heart because their heart improved that much just by taking one nutrient. 
but by adding CoQ10 and carnitine to ribose, you have a full spectrum of nutrients there to improve overall heart health. Uh, potassium is needed for uh, heart health. Get your potassium out of your fruits and vegetables. Uh, taurine is another nutrient that actually works with potassium and magnesium to move those nutrients in and out of the heart muscle to help the regulation of heartbeat. So th there you are with a quick little heart study on all the nutrients you need for great heart health. So let's go with the next question here. It almost seems like these all these questions are coming in from guys. So men, thank you for watching the show. Next question. This comes all the way from Toronto, Canada. So hey, everybody in Canada. Uh, this comes from Edward, and he he has sent me a question. It says I've been dealing with some prostate discomfort, but I don't have a problem with urination. What could it be, and what can I take to keep my prostate healthy? First of all, Edward, go to your doctor or go see your urologist to find out what it could be. I'm not here to diagnose. That's not my job. My job is to to bring forth natural nutrition, natural nutrients that can help with me uh, with a variety of health issues. So when it comes to the prostate, man, we need to pay attention to the prostate. <clears throat> if you get over the age of 50, you always need a prostate exam at least once a year. All right. So you're having a problem with your prostate, but you're not having a problem with urination. Okay. Now, the thing is you could have prostatitis. So I'm going to tell you some nutrients that you would use for prostatitis. Now, I just talked about monolarin. You could use monolarin to help fight any type of bacteria uh, that could be in the urinary tract. It works very well. Uh, women, if you have a UTI, monolarin with some cranberry extract works wonders for a UTI. But men can get a UTI, UTI as well. But if you have prostatitis, here's the problem. A lot of the antibiotics out there don't make it to the prostate because of a poor blood supply. What I usually suggest is maybe using something such as ginger root or cayenne pepper capsules to increase blood flow to the far ends of the body, to those areas of the body that don't receive a strong blood flow. So if you're taking things for prostatitis, which I'm going to explain here, that uh, you want to take cayenne or you want to take something like ginger to act as a catalyst to get that down there. Uh, a lot of men may be on an antibiotic called Cepro. Cepro does not work very well for prostatitis. So here are things that you want to do if it's prostatitis. I just showed you at the beginning of today's program a product called Sweet Wheat by Brightcore Nutrition. Wheatgrass, or their form of wheatgrass, is extremely alkaline to the body. That's a plus side because most Americans are very acidic. Uh, when our body's as acidic, then we set up disease conditions in our body and we cause ill health. By bringing our system back into a healthy alkaline state, then bad things don't grow. Uh, I had a gentleman who started using the sweet wheat capsules for prostatitis, and he said after three days I wasn't dealing with any more discomfort. He couldn't believe it. Uh, what I also suggest is using a bioflavonoid called quercetin. Quercetin works great for prostatitis. If you're dealing with any type of prostate discomfort, quercetin is great. There's also an anti-cancer effect to uh, quercetin as well. Uh, use the monolarin that I suggested earlier because it's an antiviral, antibacterial, antifungal. Sometimes prostatitis could be caused by fungus in, in your body. Maybe you're eating too much sugar. You have a poor diet. You're not getting a, a good new. You don't have good nutrition uh, coming into your body. Maybe you're eating too much junk food. Uh, sugar feeds bad pathogens. Also, take a high-quality probiotic. You need to do that. But nutrients for the prostate. We know about saw palmetto. Saw palmetto is great for an enlarged prostate. Pygium extract is great for an enlarged prostate. Those help with urination. Nettle leaf. Nettle leaf is great. It's an antihistamine. Works great for sinuses. Saw palmetto works great for sinuses, believe it or not. Even works great for women. Uh, but it also works in the areas of improving urination uh, with the prostate gland. Now, there are three nutrients that I've noticed aren't really used anymore, but they're extremely effective for prostate health. That is the amino acids glycine, alanine, and glutamic acid. There used to be this old, old formula on the market. It used to, I think it was called Prostex, and Prostex is no longer made from what I understand, but it was the only prostate formula I ever saw they had those three nutrients for a reason because they worked. Before saw palmetto was discovered for, for prostate and pygium and nettle leaf and all these other things that they're promoting for prostate health, these three nutrients, glycine, alanine, and glutamic acid, worked 
very, very well. So you may want to uh, check those out. Also, lycopene. Guys, we need lycopene in our body. That is a carotenoid. That is an antioxidant that is found to reduce the risk for cancer in the prostate and also provide prostate health. All right, now for your minerals and your nutrients. Vitamin B6 is vital. Bi vitamin B6 works as a uh, catalyst in the areas of zinc, selenium, though, and magnesium. Those three nutrients need to be found in the prostate gland to improve overall health, reduce the risk for cancer because zinc is needed for fertility in your immune system, selenium, is found in the prostate gland. That is an anti-cancer nutrient. Selenium is also found in your liver. So this is vital for your immune system and to be an anti-cancer nutrient. Magnesium. 70 to 80% of Americans today are deficient in magnesium. Magnesium is also a mineral <clears throat> that kicks all of our vitamins and minerals into action and also helps for us to absorb those nutrients just think that if you are deficient in magnesium you're not going to use vitamin uh, d3 or calcium effectively for bone health so think about those things so edward in toronto canada think about using quercetin monolaurin uh, do the bright core nutrition uh, w uh, sweet wheat capsules since uh, I, I get a lot of positive comments about that product in the areas of men's health of course it's great for men and women because it helps to improve overall health of all the cells of our body so check that out um, always tell my sponsors that that uh, that you know me because they do offer specials and discounts when you mention my name now let's cover one more question here real quick this one's really important and this comes from Nadine from Battle Creek, Michigan. And she says, I was in an auto accident recently and cracked a bone in my spine. What can I do naturally to help heal it and reduce my pain? Okay, <clears throat> bone health. Use collagen for bone health because your bones contain 90% collagen. Didn't say 90% calcium. 90% collagen. You need to make sure you're getting collagen every single day type one type two type three uh, also to calcium citrates good i like calcium malate uh, that's also works for the muscles uh, also to uh, you want to take your vitamin d3 and also vitamin k2 so with vitamin d3 at least 5,000 international units a day uh, vitamin k2 the clinical dose would actually be 10 milligram if you go to the store you really only find a hundred Microgram. You'd have to take a ton of that to get to 10 milligram. Usually you can go online and find a vitamin K2 10 milligram and just take one a day. It flips the switch in your body. So what it's going to do is it's going to prevent calcium from going into the arterial wall or soft tissue and help to drive the calcium into the bone where it belongs. So there's a, a great protective effect there. Some people just start taking K2 and find that that can reduce hardening of the arteries because now it's helping the body to take the calcium and put it into the bone where it belongs. So think about that. Now, if you're on a blood thinner, uh, talk to your doctor. K, vitamin K is usually a no-no. I do know that a lot of the modern day blood thinners do allow vitamin K and dark green leafy vegetables that contain vitamin K. So please, before you take vitamin K2 and you are on a blood thinner, talk to your doctor. I believe in using wisdom and because wisdom equals safety and that's what we want. All right. So you chipped a bone in your in a bone in the spine. So we want to improve overall health. So when it comes to the bone, collagen, calcium, magnesium, vitamin D3 and vitamin K2. Another nutrient that I would highly suggest to use is called hyaluronic acid. We're born with hyaluronic acid in our body. It's part of the connective tissue. It's part of the glue that holds all of our cells together. But as we get older, we lose hyaluronic acid. Believe it or not, that if you start showing signs of fine lines and wrinkles, that means you're losing hyaluronic acid. Hyaluronic acid is found in your joints and all the connective tissue. 50% of it's found in your skin. It's found in the vitreous humor, the jelly that's in your eyeball. It's found in the heart valve. So it's found in very important places. But it's extremely healing. And you can actually use hyaluronic acid for pre-op and post-op because it prepares your body 
for surgery and helps you to heal after surgery and also helps you to heal after an injury because it helps to inhale incisions, it reduces scar tissue formation, and just helps everything heal correctly. It is so powerful that they've actually done clinical studies on hyaluronic acid versus neosporin and found that a hyaluronic acid heals quick, a lot faster than neosporin and also found out that with diabetics, remember they have slow wound healing capabilities because of the diabetes, but other clinical studies show that when a diabetic takes hyaluronic acid on a daily uh, basis, they will heal just as effective and just as quick as a non-diabetic. I actually had a client years ago, she was raising full-blooded uh, Rottweilers. She would go out to feed them, and these dogs had very powerful tails. I mean, they would just wag, but it's just like being getting beat up by a stick. And she would come back in, and her legs would just be completely bruised. And she was a severe diabetic. So she told me she started taking the hyaluronic acid that I suggested. And she noticed that over time, she'd go out to feed the dogs and come back. She no longer bruised. It was simply because the hyaluronic acid started to build up in her system, build up in her skin. It uh, becomes a protective barrier for not only your skin, but also your connective tissue as well. If you really want strong, healthy connective tissue, hyaluronic acid and collagen are two nutrients you can take every single day. Uh, again, those nutrients do not interfere with any types of medications whatsoever. They're very safe to use and very nutritious to our overall body. So let me do this. We have a, a really quick question from Chelsea from England, Arkansas. That's our second one from Arkansas. She says, I get a sty in my eye three or four times a year. What causes them? What can I do to stop them? Well, styes are caused by the Staphylococcus bacteria, bacteria and can I actually be found in the nose? So if you pick your nose and you rub your eye, you could end it with a sty. But also, styes can be caused by low immune system function, low vitamin A levels. Uh, if you increase your vitamin A in, in, your, in your daily diet, you can actually heal styes. Monolarin that I mentioned earlier uh, can also work in killing that staph infection to clear up a sty just in a matter of days. So again, monolarin and vitamin A are fantastic when it comes to uh, styes on the eyes, uh, as well as we had mentioned warts earlier on in the program. So ladies and gentlemen, that's a lot of the Q&A today. We kicked off with a news item on why Yohimbi spikes blood pressure through the roof. So again, for you guys out there looking for a safe, natural sexual stimulant, uh, look at Mirapawama and look for high quality. So I want to thank all of my sponsors today. I want to thank Brightcore Nutrition again for sponsoring today's broadcast. I also want to thank uh, Herbal Ultra. Uh, Carlson Labs. Oh, I love your fish oil and your vitamin E, guys. Love it. And keep up the great work. Uh, all of my friends at Mushroom Wisdom with the finest, absolutely wild-crafted mushroom products, the best on the face of the earth. They have the clinical data to back that up. And also to Pure Essence Labs. I want to th thank them as well. So also go to my website at drwardbond.com. Learn more about all of my sponsors. And we will be back on Monday. So let me leave you with this. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. May you all have a great weekend. I'm Dr. Ward Bond. And remember, something spectacular happens when you treat your body right. Thank you for watching. We will see you again next week. Be blessed.